ES Audio. Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers and this is Tech in Science Daily. This week we're looking at the future of electric vehicles as the Evening Standard prepares for its Plug It In Summit in London, where global leaders will be meeting in the city to talk about how EVs can be part of ambitions to bring down carbon emissions to net zero by 2030. London's known for a lot of things, Buckingham Palace, the Tube, Big Ben, and of course, our iconic buses. Transport for London has just revealed its next foray into green transport, fully electric tram buses, or IE trams as they like to call them. My name is Tom Cunnington and I'm Head of Buses Business Development at Transport for London. These are a new design for the UK of buses. Uh, They're 12 metres long single decks and it's very striking in its appearance. It's designed uh, for a French city uh, which was planning to put in a tram system and the front of it is designed to replicate some of those those looks. 20 of the futuristic bubble-shaped vehicles have been acquired by Go Ahead, the city's largest bus operator. It's the first time that Spanish e-mobility scooter manufacturer Irizar has made and launched right-hand drive trams in the UK. For us, though, we're very much thinking of it as a bus. And the reason that we bought this particular bus is it's got uh, the opportunity to use what we call opportunity charging, which is the way to have smaller batteries on the bus. Uh, So there's less weight of the battery being driven around all day, but it has to boost up at the end of each journey. So uh, unlike a train, which has got a power connection all the way along its journey, or most of the rest of our buses where they just get charged overnight and they've got enough power in them to run all day, this bus does a little bit of both. It's got enough power to complete a journey, but at the end of the journey, it needs to connect to the power through a pantograph, which comes down from uh, a a large gantry that's positioned at the two termini of the route. uh, And that power fast charges the bus in in three or four minutes, uh, enough power to do a journey going back in the other direction as well. The trial involves the IE trams being used along the 358 route from Crystal Palace to Orpington and starts in spring 2023. If you don't know the route, it's a pretty long one. According to Tech and Science Daily's back of a napkin calculation, it's roughly 15 miles and around 78 stops in each direction. So they'll be properly tested. As with all electric vehicles, battery life could be a concern And then there's also the logistics of charging them. Sounds like quite the challenge on a particularly demanding bus route, which can often have heavy congestion. When these buses are in service going along the route, they'll go at the normal speed the current diesel buses do. So there should be no change in terms of the operation for customers. The journey time should be about the same. The wait time, the frequency of the service, the interval between buses coming to a stop, it's, that's, that's unchanged as well. The buses already have what's called recovery time. And that time at the end of the route is typically somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes at both ends of the route. So we're going to use some of that time to charge the bus. And the rest of that time is, is still there if needed, if the bus is running a little bit late as well. So we don't expect this will have an impact on services uh, uh, on, on the vast majority of days. Uh, but that's exactly the point of doing this trial with this particular technology on this route. It's all part of London's target to become a net zero city by 2030, something the mayor Sadiq Khan has promised to deliver. We've got a huge fleet. We've got the biggest fleet of buses outside of China, biggest fleet in the world outside of China, uh, with uh, about eight, eight and a half thousand vehicles in the fleet. And um, therefore it's a real challenge for us of how we convert all of those buses with their very different characteristics. Some routes are quite short, some routes are quite long, some work for 24 hours a day and some work for for a much shorter period of the day. But making sure that we've got all the different technologies that we need to convert that whole network to zero emission is what we're working through. We think about 80 to 90% of the routes can be done by big batteries with one big charge overnight in the garage. But we do think the other 10 to 20% will require things like the opportunity charging we're trying with the IE tram buses on Route 358 or the hydrogen buses that we're trying on Route 7 and 245 uh, to make sure that we can convert the routes to zero emission cost effectively and to provide a reliable service. After the break, find out how TfL's electric mission is being impacted by the energy crisis. Whilst you're here, why not give us a rate and follow?
I think London has has been one of the leaders in the world around moving towards reducing uh, emissions. Uh, we focus uh, first of all on local emissions, so nitrogen oxide and particulate matter, and all of our fleet has been a Euro 6 standard for a long time, which has been really addressing the local air quality issues, which was a real issue in some parts of London, and it's been a particular aim of our current mayor to uh, push uh, for improving air quality, to improve uh, the quality of life and life chances of, of many Londoners as well. So air quality has been kind of the, 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 a big success over the last few years. In parallel, we're starting our journey towards decarbonisation, and we are on a journey to decarbonisation. We've been looking at uh, reducing the amount of fuel and carbon uh, that we use by moving towards hybrid technology, and we led the way with that in the UK uh, over 15 years ago by converting many of our double-deck vehicles as we brought them to hybrid, which saves between 10 and 20 percent on fuel by, re, uh, by by not having the engine on all the time and using battery power in there to, to support the diesel engine. And that saves 10 to 20 percent of, of carbon, and that was a bridging technology. We are now fully into moving towards a zero emission fleet. And for the last couple of years, we've committed to buy nothing but zero emission vehicles when we replace the fleet in London. And that therefore means that by 2034, on the current trajectory, our whole fleet will be zero emission. But with both the energy and the cost of living crisis set to continue for the foreseeable, will the city becoming carbon neutral really be achievable moving forward? I think all of the uncertainty at the moment, whether it's around the price of energy itself or the price of materials, the price of buses um, and possibly even labour shortages as well around specialists to do some of the power upgrades that are needed, make this a really challenging time to be doing this. It would be certainly a lot easier if uh, none of those things were happening at the moment. But I think we do recognise that this has to be done. We need to find our, our way through those. The energy crisis, the price of electricity is a particular challenge. The economics of moving to a zero emission bus fleet across uh, most of the world, but particularly in London and the UK, is based on the fact that you do make a saving in the in the price of energy. The cost of electricity for a route is about 25% of the price of diesel. So you can make a sort of 75% reduction in your fuel energy costs to run the route, which offsets the quite uh, high investment that needs to go into the higher price of the vehicles up front and the infrastructure cost that goes in. And we got to a stage um, sort of you know, a year or two ago where we could see those two prices coming together where actually the price of getting to zero emission, the total life cost of it was getting very similar to the price of, of, of diesel vehicles. What I think the current energy crisis has led to is obviously the spike in electricity prices in the short term and there's a lack of clarity about where that's going to go to in the medium and long term. And that has destabilised the market to an extent and it's meant that the business cases for us but also for the bus operators that actually invest in that infrastructure and the buses on our behalf it does become more challenging to get across the line. But it's our job to make the case for why this is the right thing to do uh, and to work with supply chain to, to understand that and to, and to find our way through that. That's it from this special episode of Tech and Science Daily. We'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.